Um, so what would you say when I told you that your career, that your work status um, is partly, not completely, but partly influenced by the time your school started when you were a teenager? So here's a little story. Um, so everyone, I mean, we all were teenagers at some point, or we still are. Um, teenagers sleep very late, much later than the parents or teachers do. Uh, we all experience that. And there's consistent evidence showing that the earlier the school starts and the later a student typically sleeps, the worse is the performance, so the grades. It's significant. And grades, so that's what I've been told, grades still mean something about future career prospects. So, uh, what do so, so schools, I mean, what, what, what are they doing? They, they create sleepy and grumpy students, literally. It's a fabric. Um, and what do sleepy, grumpy students do? They disturb class more often. That impairs the learning environment for everyone, and it increases the stress for the teacher. So teachers, anyways, are already high in burnout and early retirement rates. Um, and it's really a hard job being a teacher these days. And I'm deeply convinced, I truly believe, if we could improve sleep in teenagers and adolescents, it could improve their performance and career prospects. And it would even a burnout prevention strategy for the teachers. No one has tested this, but I truly believe it could work that way. So bottom line, what schools are doing, and I think schools is the first place in our lives where these things happen, schools prepare us for a world where there is, well, where sleep has no priority. It's, it's actually very low. Um, what they make of us is what I would call sleep incompetent people. And I must say that most of us here in this room um, show the, the clearest sign of sleep incompetence, and this is our frequent use of alarm clocks every morning. So when I would ask you, how many of you need an alarm clock every morning, it's, it's most of us here in this room. And have you ever thought about why we are doing this? Because we as a society, we, we accept that. This is, this is why it works. So, um, I mean, we, we cannot blame society without blaming ourselves. That's the point, I think. And um, so, the, the, the difficulty I see here is it, it really comes at a significant cost. It's, it's a very dangerous development, actually, because there's, there's so many evidence. I mean, sleep, we all know that, that sleep is so important. So, when people don't sleep sufficiently, they are more depressed, they, they are more prone to accidents, they develop serious health problems, etc., etc. And we are a part of this, because we as a society, we accept that the world ticks as it ticks. Um, one of the clearest examples is, I mean, if, if, if we would not accept that, why do we see things like daylight savings time? And just two weeks ago, we changed all, so every one of us, we changed our clocks, didn't we? One hour ahead. And it only works because we collectively agree to go to work one hour earlier. And that no one notices, we just change the clocks. So that's the deal, we do. But it, I mean, it saves nothing. I've no idea where this, where, this, where this term comes from, actually, but it saves nothing. It costs just our health. So you, you might not know, but the only reason why we have daylight savings time is that no country in the EU took the initiative to abolish it. Just no one did it. Just no one tried it. That's it. And it would be possible, absolutely, if, if, if we just would, would do it. Um, another thing is a mis mysterious thing still. Why, why do we see such a frequent increase in shift work? So the problem that shift workers have is they age earlier, they age quicker, because they develop serious health problems um, at an earlier age as the general population. So would you apply for a job where it says, so here's your chance, um, earn good money and age quicker, live, live faster? Uh, not so quiet would we apply for it. But many people do it, and shift workers are everywhere. Maybe some of you came here on a plane. Pilots. Pilots are shift workers. Recently, there was a, was a, a published survey from an international um, big airline showing that 50%, 50% of their pilots reported that they fell asleep at least one time in their career while they were flying that plane. 
This is terrifying. It, it's getting serious. It's getting really serious here. And it's getting worse. Have you ever thought about the sleep state of a doctor or nurse in a hospital? These are shift workers. They are. They work day and night. And, and they have sleep problems. A lot. And hospitals is, is, is a typical example of where sleepy people treat sleepy people. Because once you are at a hospital, I mean, you are kept awake in a hectic, noisy, light-polluted environment. And once you fell asleep, they wake you up early because of breakfast. Seriously? I mean, think about it. This is the situation we think that people recover. I mean, this is, this is it, it's happening in 2016. Um, I just repeat myself, because this is, it's really dangerous what we're doing here, and we just don't notice, we accept that. And we cannot blame society without blaming ourselves. So all changed, absolutely, lies in our hands. If we don't accept that, it wouldn't work, but we do, because we grow into it all of our lives. And I really think that this situation, it screams, certainly, for revolution. I mean, we are so proud of our democratic systems, where, where everyone has a voice and we can express ourselves, and I think it very much stops at the bedroom door. And what we actually need is a sleep democracy. That's what we need, a sleep democracy. So how do we do this? I mean, can we change society? So your question could be, are we, are we lost? I mean, it always was that way, why, why bother? Um, and I think we should. We should very much worry about this, and we should find ways to change that for the future. So there's. Unfortunately, no manual, there's no white book on the shelf that we could take and say, so, so how do we do it? Um, more sleep, um, okay, no alarm clock, okay. Um, it doesn't exist. There's, there's no research on this, how we could use our knowledge about the importance of sleep to change our world. It just hasn't been tested, actually. And I'm dreaming here, and I want to, to propose you, why not um, design and start a new town? I mean, who would volunteer to live in that? In a town where we pave the way for time and sleep democracy, where sleep has an absolute priority. Um, schools would have flexible, working, uh, flexible opening hours. We would not have daylight savings time. We wouldn't use alarm clocks. Instead, everyone would live by their body clock. And, and this is the core principle here, actually, because your body clock, it, it helps you to stay alive and to survive because it regulates everything in your body. It's like an internal calendar, and it regulates your sleep. And usually it is synchronized to the natural light-dark cycle, to the transition of day and night. And it does it via light. So simply, whenever we see light, it means to our body clocks there's day. Whenever there's day, it means there's no night. Whenever there's no night, there's no sleep. So the more light you have in a day, and especially the more artificial light you have before dawn, after dusk, the less sleep you have. And this is a serious problem. So in, in this town, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have this. So, so we, we have flexible school hours. We have, oh, we have green classrooms. We have, we have lectures outdoors to get more daylight. How, how that, does that sound? We would have um, no exams before the lunch break, for instance, Not, no exams in the early part of the day. Um, clinics would do chronotherapy. This is, this, is, this is beyond personalized medicine. This is medical treatments designed for your body clock, where we take this serious. Because body clocks are so diverse, like our body height or weight or eye color or, or hair color. So we, we need to take this um, way more serious. Uh, flexible working hours. Just, I mean, the last time you applied for a job, have you been asked at what time of day you would like to work? Everyone here in this room knows when their best time for work is, when, when, when your productivity is highest, when you enjoy your work most. But no employer on earth is using this. It's the most precious human resource you can give to your employer, but it's just not been used. And this time we, we could use that. Um, and I must say that this town actually exists. I think this time here is completely wrong, I must say. So I have no idea wh where we are now. Um, but, uh, but I think continue, because we changed we change the, change the order a bit. Um, 
So, because, so, and I'll, so we, we built this town, actually. Um, my friend and colleague, Michael Wien and I, we were setting up a town in a, in a German place called Bad Kissingen. It's a spa town, it's a health resort. And what we're setting up there is a chrono city, a city that pays respect to time and sleep. And we are, we are working to, to bring these ideas to life. And we already made good success. We have brilliant people there that help us. I have so many enthusiastic students helping us to make this, this thing fly. And it is it is absolute um, future of our, well, of a new society that, that take sleep and time very, very seriously. I'd like to give you some examples because um, it's a fantastic journey and you really learn a lot about how our society works. Um, but you get very frustrated at some point when you realize how inflexible and stupid we sometimes are. And a typical example is school hours. Um, changing school hours in that place, so it's a small town, heavily relies on the local traffic. Changing school hours in that place means to change the local traffic. Changing local traffic in that place affects, changes the local traffic at a distance of 400 kilometers. I was speechless when I heard that. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I mean, that's the distance from um, Eemshaven to Maastricht here in the Netherlands. It's, it's the whole of the Netherlands. I mean, I still cannot believe this, how, how stupid we are to build a society that is so unflexible and inflexible uh, to not allow for these changes. Um, all my, so it's a life story for myself, actually, because when I was a teenager, I was quite often sitting in the, in the office of our school principal. Um, it wasn't always my fault while I was sitting there, but <laughs> anyways, I was, I was sitting there. And at that time already, I was fighting for a revolution. I deliberately was looking for borders that I could cross. And where's the next border that I can cross? And then I crossed it. And I was trying to see how far can I get. And this is what I do now. I did it all my life. And now with this town, it, it works. It's the little steps that count. And um, so we cannot blame society without blaming ourselves. And I tell you, I mean, all the change totally lies in our hands. I couldn't do it with all these, uh, without all these um, wonderful people. And if we don't do it now, we will not succeed in doing it. So I'd like to take you on this journey. You can come. It's a real town, and um, you don't have to live there because you can do it in your own personal life already. Just think about how can you get more sleep priority back into your life and to bring sleep democracy back into your life. We don't have to accept all these things. It is about us. It is about our sleep. It is about our health. It is about our future. And most of all, it's about time for a sleep democracy. Thank you.